Scott, um, afternoon to you. Hope you're well. Um, just wanted to, to, to start by getting your thoughts on the announcement of London being in Tier 2. Fans coming back in, in some areas, not, not in all areas. I think not for your, uh, your, your, um, your game against Manchester City, but nevertheless, the whole concept of fans back in, what are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, um, it's a breath of fresh air, really. I think, obviously, I think it's everything what, what we all want, what obviously the fans want, certainly us as... Uh, what are out there, player-wise, staff, and and and, and as a team, uh, we want nothing more than the, the the fans to to come back into stadium. So um, yeah, I think that news in terms of where we are in London and, and exactly that is is perfect, really. And hopefully from here we can it can obviously progress at the moment, like you said, two thousand fans. But from here maybe hopefully that that progresses and, and becomes more. So. Um, that's every, you know, it's everything what we why we play the game and the, what it brings brings people together. So, good news, um, and hopefully, like I said, it can. Um, we're on the we're on the upward upward curve now, and we can keep improving. What sort of impact do you think it will have to have some fans back in? Because it's now been quite a while that you've not been able to play with, um, with, with fans there. And I suppose to a degree, you've had to adapt as coaches, fans have had to adapt as well. Um, I, I just wonder, just having that small number, will it make a big difference? Or will, it, will you have to wait until there's a packed house for it to make a big difference? Well, at the moment, I, you know, you're not, not sure. I think it's fair to say we have, we've, we've, We've had a long time without fans, so in terms of getting used to that and that environment, it will be probably a little bit strange at, at first, and it is going to be different um, because obviously we've played for such a long time without that um, atmosphere. But in saying that, I think we all we all understand the impact it has and the the lift it can give you, the the atmosphere it can generate, and even it be, even only being. Uh, a few or two thousand, I think, is going to have a, a positive, no, in, positive impact. Like Just from a, a Fulham, uh, Fulham specific question on that, do you, you know, there, there have been some really tight games that, that Fulham have had. I mean, I think particularly your last one, where you, you know you did so well to get back into it. Had there been a crowd, it might have given you the push to have actually turned that result over. There's a number of teams who are, who are in this situation, particularly at home, where the, the, there's some really narrow results, and you just thought, had there been people in there it might have given you the required nudge. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I, I, think, I think that's a fair point you make, and for, for sure. And I think we've seen it over the, over the course of many seasons what we've been involved in the game, that certainly at home and, and at home fans and when you're in the ascendancy and when that pressure's coming, what can get, make you feel a little bit taller as that team with that support can make the opposite team feel that, wow, this is, this is coming on top a little bit. So, yeah, f for sure there's... there's there's, there's 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 pros and cons. Obviously, like I've just said, there you know, you're on that team or you're on the opposite team. It can work both ways. But the incidents, what you give last game against Everton, when we you know we come out second half and play extremely well and put them under a lot of pressure, that you know you'd like to think that maybe with with the supporting fans behind you as well, it, it you know it could it could only add add, add to that. You must be getting very frustrated talking about kind of your team being so um, mixed. You know, having having games where they, you know they, they, you, you get yourselves into a situation, then do brilliantly to very nearly get yourself out of it, and these really fine margins. This is this, we've been talking about this a number of times with you this season. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I see a very good I see a very good team in in, in my team at, at, at times, and it's the of course, there's the fine margins of the Premier League and what that brings and the quality that brings. Um, and sometimes you can't really do anything about that. That's just down to pure quality and sheer quality that you're on the wrong end of it. Um, and, the, and, and the other things are just recognising certain certain moments uh, in games. So um, it has been there has been some frustrating times. There's been some very pleasing times as well in terms of where we are, um, how we've played, how we've adapted ourselves this year against some very good teams. We played played top teams, which we play all year. But you know, I, I I like what I see in my team, and of course, there's a lot of improvements to make. And I constantly keep saying that, and I will constantly keep saying that throughout the, the whole of this season. Um, but in saying that, I also see a very very good team that on you know in moments against against opposition, against quality opposition, can have a real way about us and, and, and can show that. Now we need to translate that, of course, into points and into wins because, like anything, you don't want to be a nice footballing team that plays nice football but loses matches. The, the aim is, you know, we need to win games. We need to get that balance right, really, and that's part of growing, that's part of learning quickly and keep trying to develop that. 
Uh, and you mentioned these high quality teams you're playing. You, you go into another one uh, this weekend or, you know, on Monday, uh, another test against, you know, a team who are doing phenomenally well this season. Yeah, a very good side. Brendan's done a fantastic job there, a good side. What well, only a few years ago won the won the Premier League and uh, have a lot of quality in their in, in their ranks. It'll be a tough game for us, uh, another tough game. We understand that. Um, but as always, these are the challenges what we embrace this year. These are the challenges which we look forward to. This is why we we worked as hard as and relentless as we did last year to get out of the championship and play in these sort of games every week. Um, so yeah, it'll be no different come come Monday night. How how close? How how, how oh, it's difficult to quantify, but how close do you think your team is to just clicking? Because we, as you say, there are so many good signs, and then there are there, there are times when these don't go quite, quite so well. How, how how far away do you think you might be from from everything coming together for your your new Fulham team? Uh, yeah, I feel I feel I feel it's close. I feel I feel like as a team, I feel like we're going in the right direction. As it, you know, like I said, it's the fine margins. It's an it's it's a it's it's a now of sometimes the league and what I talk about. And in this division, you can't afford to lose a minute of concentration. In this division, you can't afford to to be to be the wrong side of someone or to make individual errors um, because you get punished. And at times this year, we've fallen short on that in terms of that understanding that we've been on the wrong end of it. Um, but like I said, in saying that. I think anyone who watches us play this year, who has half a clue on football, who, who who watches a lot of football, will see where some of our deficiencies are. But we'll see clearly um, where we, you know, where we where we are as a team and what what we're doing and, and and how good we are at times. And that takes courage at times. The way we play, it takes it takes real, yeah, a real courage about us. Um, and like I said, yeah, we've caused many teams a, a lot of problems. We just now need to. You keep developing. It's a young team. I think we're four games in or five games in since this window shut. New players, six, seven, eight, nine new players who are, who are getting to grips with it, listening to my voice, getting my message, understand what we want. Um, and I, you know, I feel like we're, we're, we're definitely on the on the right track. Thanks, Nick. Um, I think we have Jeremy Langdon now. Jeremy, can you unmute and ask questions? Oh. Yeah, hi, Scott. Hi. Hi, Jeremy. You're okay, mate. Yeah, good. Um, just on the fans coming back, do you think it's fair that 10 Premier League clubs can get fans back, but 10 who are in Tier 3 can't? Um, do I think it's fair? I mean, look, I'd, I've literally just come in off the training ground and I've just heard that news. So um, I suppose that's a predicament we're in at this present moment in time in, in, in the sense of there's a tier system that, that, that some, um, some areas in the UK obviously... Um, can't have fans and some can so I suppose that's just in terms of the dynamics is it fair uh, yeah you just hit me with that question really right on the spot so um, yeah I, I'm not really sure to be fair Jeremy I, all I know is I'm pleased that in terms of us we, we, we can have some fans in I think that's a big positive in, in where we are and, and, and how things are, are look like they're going in the, in the right direction so um, yeah that's, that's, that's a pleasing, pleasing point really Scott um, Fulham fans are wondering who takes the next penalty yeah, look. Uh, <clears throat> at this moment in time, I think it's clear, and you know, it's well documented, it's well publicised that um, we've had some problems. We missed our last three. What was culminated in some some points being being dropped when you look at it. So there's no denying the fact that you know there there has been a a little bit of an issue here because you you look at them penalties if they go in they would have they would have contributed to to maybe five points you could look at. So certainly there, there is something here what we need to look at and it is something we're doing. Um, you know, we're trying to work out what the best processes are, the best penalty takers. This is just the same as what it would be. You concede a lot of goals from set plays or you're conceding a lot of goals due to a deficiency, what you can see and you're trying to practice, you're trying to work out what the best solutions are. Um, and this is no different, um, exactly that. So. In terms of the psychology, of course, there's a psychology behind it in terms of a player and how he feels and who's best feels like they're best equipped to take a penalty. Um, and then we work backwards from there and, and, and keep working on that. I mean, are you practising more? And if you do get one at Leicester on Monday, I mean, who would you like to see take it? Well, we're practising, but we practice, we practice most, most weeks. So um, we always practice penalties. Um, in terms of me giving you a name on who's going to take the penalty against Leicester, I'm not going to do that. 
we'll, like I said, we we'll put a process in place and we'll work out who we think's best equipped to to take take the penalty, and and that's what it's down to really. So um, it's down to you know who who feels that the most confident, who feels that they can step up, and and we'll work from there. A couple more, Scott. Um, Diego Maradona, he famously came to the cottage ten years ago. Was he the greatest for you? Well, he's certainly he's certainly one of them for sure. Um, you know, I brought up around when I was a young boy watching Diego Maradona and the quality, and and, it, and I was fortunate enough to un recognise or certainly um, at an age where I, I see his quality. So uh, a superstar, one of the greats um, on the field. Obviously, the quality brought. And the character and everything else he brought off here as well. So someone who's going to be sadly missed, but someone who gives so much to the game or so much to football that will forever go down as one of the, the greats and an icon. And just finally, it's four points from nine and it's Leicester, Man City and Liverpool next. I mean, it's pretty daunting, isn't it? Yeah, so there's a big challenge there. Big challenge. Daunting, no, not really, but certainly there's a big challenge there, of course, because playing against them arguably the, the top teams in this division. Um, but, you know, this this is why we worked so hard and tirelessly last year to get out the championship to to come and face these teams this year. And there's a challenge ahead of us, of course there is, but, um, you know, we'll embrace that challenge and, and, and hopefully put up, put up a good fight for ourselves and try and get some points. We're going to these games like we do all games, whether, you're playing, whether we play against Liverpool, Man City, or, or any other team, we're going to try and put a stamp on the game, show our way, show our quality, what we, we feel we can have, and, and obviously try and pick up some points along the way. Thanks, Scott. Cheers. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. We carry on with broadcast. We move over to Premier League Productions. Faye Carruthers, please. Hi, Scott. Nice to see you. Hi, Faye. Um, talking about Leicester, Man City and Liverpool coming up, um, in the kind of season that this season is, are they actually now realistically games that you can get points in? Um, I don't know whether the situation and, and what the current climate, what we're in, gives us that option more than it did did before. Um, I suppose there is many factors in, in, in terms of you know a lot of games for the, the, these teams and certainly for us as well and, and everything else what brings that. But listen, there. They're quality teams we're, we're playing against, world-class, with world-class squad, world-class players. So always going to be a challenge for us. And I think whether we was in this predicament or not, we played Man City last time we was in and Liverpool. And we went into that game wanting to try and get some points, went into that game trying to put our stamp on the game, understanding there was going to be a challenge at times. But also, also wanted to put our mark on it and see if we can cause them problems and try and get some points out of it. It's going to be no different this time. I mean, we play Leicester on Monday night, it's the same. We want to try and put our mark on it. So um, climate or no climate is, I suppose, from, from my point out, our psyche is exactly the same as what it was before, really. Leicester have been really good to watch this season, but as you say, you're a work in progress at the moment and, uh, and can cause these big teams problems. What kind of problems can you cause them on Monday? Um, sorry, I, you broke up the first bit, but you just asking what problems we can cause Leicester, Faye, is that what you said? Pretty much, yeah. Well, like, like always, you know, we've got, we've got a way about us. We have players in our team that can cause, that can cause any team problems, really. So in terms, of, in terms of the way we play, in terms of trying to get a control of the game and, and trying to put our stamp on it um, in the attacking, certainly in the attacking third of the field, we have players here in and around it and I think we see that against Everton certainly that going forward at times when we can move the ball quick um, with, with good forward runs and good penetration we, we, we can hurt teams and that's going to be no no different come Leicester come Liverpool um, of course I have an understanding of the whole whole part of the game but certainly there are a, a, an area where we'd like to see that we can put our mark on the game for sure You talked about um, the players in Devon late on Saturday and you want a bit more intensity from them. What, what more have you asked your, from your players at this update? Yeah, look, I think, you know, regarding the game and the way the game panned out at the weekend, we give, we give up, we give up some, um, some silly goals, for sure. We give up some silly goals and I, I think I mentioned that after, I still stand by that. You give up silly goals in this division, it's going to become pretty difficult but also you know I thought first half in terms of just the basics of the game we just weren't quite good enough I felt we had some nice moments what we showed but in terms of jewels and and the real basics of the football match second ball 
and now it's about understanding and game management and understanding certain moments of games. I didn't think we was we was quite there, and certainly second half we showed that. Um, and that should be really that should be a blueprint for us that second half performance because we still had the quality, we still had the 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 real identity about us. We had the control, but what we did have, what we added, what we didn't have in the first half was more of an intent about about respecting the base of the game, second balls, and really trying to put a put our stamp on the game and build into the game. We've done that very well and. Um, that was a big learning curve for us, and you know we need to we need to understand that as a team and as a group this year. That that, that needs to be a that needs to be a fundamental for us, really.